How y'all doing? <laughs> so, my name is Scott, and I get the privilege of following that awesome uh, magician, um, the Intel Magic Show. Um, kind of wishing, because I'm a rock and roll musician back home, I wish I would have brought a guitar and maybe sung you a song. But instead, we're going to talk about um, network virtualization, software defined networking, those sorts of things. Uh, again, yeah, so my name's Scott Snedden. That's me on Twitter. Please follow. I'll post these slides to SlideShare. Um, I'm not sure how this works at OpenStack and how we get these things published on the site. So I'll make sure I put them on SlideShare, and I will tweet the link as soon as they're posted. I'm going to talk about network policy, some of the activity that's happening in the uh, um, you know, OpenStack area and in the neutron networking area around uh, this policy abstraction framework and why that's important. And then I'm going to do a really short demo, because this is the demo theater. And if I didn't do a demo, um, one of the other guys on my team was going to kick my ass. So I've got a really short, just uh, short and sweet demo showing a Nuage network virtualization between an OpenStack cluster and a couple of networks. So I'll be doing routing and switching. And then I'm going to show connecting those networks to a VMware cluster. So I've got vSphere and ESX and all of that. I'm going to start a VM there, and I'm going to attach it to that OpenStack Neutron network that I created and show routing and switching between ESX and Neutron. So, Nuage Networks has been around for about two years. Uh, we launched our product a year ago. We just shipped 2.1 week, week and a half ago. So, you know, we've got some experience in this space now. We're talking to a lot of customers around the world. Really, the thing that is important to these customers and why they care about network virtualization and things like Neutron is this change in consumption. You know, the cloud, as we all know, has really shifted the way consumers consume these compute resources. And by consumers, I mean IT departments or you know, public cloud uh, customers and things like that. They've really gotten away from this order and wait model into an instant gratification mode, where they can easily select from a catalog of tools and quickly deploy virtual machines and compute resources on demand when they want and generally where they want. Um, and so their expectation has really shifted. And so we've We've addressed that requirement and they need, or maybe we've created that need by introducing cloud computing by virtualizing the, uh, the infrastructure, the uh, compute infrastructure, and to a certain extent, the storage infrastructure. And we've partially virtualized the network. So maybe I can start to automate my vSwitch configuration, but I'm probably still going through a help desk or some change control to change my VLANs or change a router or affect a firewall rule. Um, and, and so, you know, that's process. That's a trouble ticket to a help desk, and it takes days or weeks to deploy those things. So the network configuration hasn't really shifted enough to match this compute, um, this new compute model or this virtualized on-demand compute model. So you know, the service velocity and the rate at which I can deploy new services is really hindered by network process, manual processes, manual review processes. Um, We've seen a lot of SDN solutions come on the market and network virtualization sorts of things that start to virtualize some of the resources. So now maybe I can auto-provision you know, a vSwitch and maybe do some VXLAN things between a couple of vSwitches, but I'm not virtualizing or I'm not automating everything just yet. If I need to talk to a WAN router, well, that's probably another team and another trouble ticket request. The security policies are all probably still audited by some security team, and that takes time. So we're starting to address some of these things, but we really haven't tackled the whole problem. We've accelerated, but we haven't addressed all these requirements. You know, committees are still building networks, even in this SDN mode. I've still probably got to go through some steps to obtain IP addresses, to obtain the right VLANs I need to connect to. So while I can start to automate some of these things, I'm still touching a lot of stuff, and I haven't really shifted away from the old paradigm of how I provision network services. And even worse, I, I have, I'm actually taking some of that uh, configuration step out of the network team and placing it in the DevOps team's hands. So now I'm forcing my DevOps teams to understand things like subnets and networks and IP routes. And you know that's not necessarily their expertise and, and not necessarily where I want to be wasting their time. So what those DevOps teams want, what the compute teams want, are just a sandbox of network. They don't care that it's VLAN or VXLAN. They don't necessarily care even how those things are connected together as long as they meet some SLA. You know, they just want to be able to place their applications into a group. I want my database applications grouped together appropriately. I want my uh, 
application tier and my web tier grouped together appropriately with the required security policy applied automatically without having to force them to worry about the specifics of how that gets implemented. So the whole idea of this network policy is to really abstract away all of those detailed configuration knobs away from that app team and just present a really simple template that they can deploy in a language they understand. So this model here is really we create a, a network template or a network policy that defines groupings, subnets, zones, security policies in between, potentially routes out to an internet or a MPLS network or something like that. That's stored as a template. That template is then given to users to consume. There's some policy evaluation that decides if that user's permitted to use that network service. And then that network service is deployed in an automated fashion in sort of a rinse and repeat over and over model. So this is really what policy-based networking is all about. Mike, tell me if I'm wrong. But uh, so Mike Dvorkin over there is uh, helping a lot with what we're doing in OpenStack. So how do we expose this into Neutron? Well, there's this activity underway that Nuage is involved in, Cisco is involved in, uh, Plexi, uh, IBM, several others are contributing to this work. Um, it's called this OpenStack group-based policy abstractions. And really, the desire here is to present this application-centric approach to networking, moving away from traditional definitions like ports and routers and subnets, really into a highly abstracted interface that lets developers just um, kind of define and, and consume API calls that are relevant to their, their needs, their use cases. I need to group my app servers together, I need to group my database servers together, and then I need to consume the security policy or the, the traffic control policy between those things without really imposing constraints on what the implementation details are. And so, you know, this sort of looks like this, where within Neutron, what we'll say is we'll have some, you know, some element or some endpoint group or EPG. Um, we'll group virtual machines or application types into those endpoint groups. We'll define some sort of contract as to how those endpoint groups connect together. And then those, these will all be presented as a really simple Neutron-based API call. So this work's ongoing. Um, this uh, project was, is approved and is under development, and you should see these things coming in Juno. Um, and then we're all working really hard on this. Now, from Nuage's perspective, we've been doing this all along. So the Nuage platform and our VSD, our, our uh, virtualized services directory, has all of these sorts of policy uh, definitions in place with our own APIs to present these things. The work we're doing in OpenStack is to expose those sorts of models into an open source uh, and, and open system. Um, so, you know, really, we can do some of these sort of networking things in Neutron today, but we want to be able to add to that to add some of the functions that are available in some of the more advanced networking tools, and then just express them in a really simple API call. So, I'll get into the kind of pitch now. Um, so Nuage is, is, we deliver a product called the Virtualized Services Platform. There's three pieces to this uh, product. There is a uh, Virtualized Services Directory or Policy Engine, which is um, where all of these policies are created and defined. I, I delegate authority to users to consume those policies. There's a really pretty GUI that you'll see in my short demo in a couple minutes that I've got to hurry to get to. Um, there's a services controller, which is our SDN controller, very, very scalable scale-out model, leveraging very, very proven routing operating systems to peer with your network, tools like BGP and MPLS built in under the covers, but abstracted and simplified into these policy templates, and they become part of the network service. And then we leverage Open vSwitch, so we've got a forwarding element that sits on every hypervisor. We've got cross-platform open support. We have a Neutron plugin. We have support for VMware. We can also support CloudStack. We support ESX, Xen, and KVM, and we can work in any data center network with data center hardware. We're an overlay solution using VXLAN or GRE or IP tunneling techniques to route packets across to fabric. So whatever data center fabric you've got in place, we'll work with just great. Um, and then we've got a model here where we can seamlessly interconnect multiple clouds together, leveraging our scale-out approach to these things we can route packets and peer with MPLS and wide area networks and extend across multiple sites in a very, very large scale way and tackle multi-cloud, multi-hypervisor use cases. Um, so when I think about migrating to OpenStack, some of the challenges are a consistent networking solution across platforms. And so what I'm going to show you is our little demonstration that we pulled together today um, 
demonstrating how we can actually do networking across platforms. So awesome, that worked. So I've got, um, I've, I've got a, a Horizon screen here. I've got OpenStack running in a lab um, over in Belgium, I think, is where we <laughs> actually logged in and ran these things. I went ahead and pre-created a couple of networks, Network 1 and Network 2. You can see the IP addressing on those networks. Um, over on the VSD console, which is the Nuage user interface, I see this tenant, which is our OpenStack default enterprise we created. And I see that when I created those networks in the OpenStack Neutron interface, they were pushed through the API into the Nuage system, and I had those defined and, and spelled out on our topology. So I went ahead and created a couple of virtual machines here. Um, so I'm going to start a VM, and I'm going to attach it to that first network. And you can watch me fumble around the user interface because I spend more time talking and less time doing these days. Um, and uh, so, you know, I, I've got a network interface. I'm going to attach it to the first network. I'll go launch that interface, that uh, machine. Then I'm going to go launch a second interface. You'll watch me make a flub here where I forget to actually assign a network to it. And boom, error message. Thanks, Horizon, for making me smart. Um, attach that to network two. We'll go launch that machine. So back over on the Nuage VSD interface, I'm going to see, see I've got IP addresses there assigned, 1.1.1 subnet and 2.2.2 .2 subnet. Um, on the VSD screen, I see those two virtual machines attached to those networks that were created before. So this is the graphical representation of what's going on at VSD. Two different subnets, VMs attached to each of them. If I drill down in our user interface, I can see all of those virtual machines and some detail about them. Thanks, Human, for tweeting about being in the middle of my presentation. So, um, I, uh, you know, so I've got those two VMs there. Now I'm going to switch over to vSphere. And the integration that we've done with VMware, you see I've got this little Nuage tab that's added to the vSphere user interface. I can select that OpenStack enterprise that I'd created in the Nuage solution before. Um, the, my user ID, select that router that was created, collect one of those zones, select one of those subnets within that zone, and go start a virtual machine. And again, you'll watch my mad skills on the uh, VMware GUI where I fumble around to try and remember how the hell to start a virtual machine. Um, way too much time on airplanes, not enough time actually working with things these days. Uh, so thankfully, I have a great team of technical people behind me that, that makes this stuff work when I'm actually with a customer. So I've started that virtual machine. That guy's booting over here. I'm going to go back over to the VSD screen and show you um, how that virtual machine is now reflected in, in VSD. And you'll be able to see that now. Awesome. So now I've got a third virtual machine attached to that guy. Um, he's up and uh, he's starting. Um, if I drill down again on the router, I'll see that I've got that attached to a different hypervisor. So Nuage is detecting those virtual machine start events. We have our uh, virtual routing and switching element installed on each of those hypervisors, some KVM hypervisors and some ESX hypervisors. And we're able to build networks seamlessly across those. We're just doing VXLAN tunneling, but we're doing them cross-platform across uh, many different, uh, <laughs> you know, I guess Human's watching it online. Or is he here? Yeah. Anyway, so now I'm back logged into that tenant VM that was running on uh, ESX, and I'm pinging one of the uh, VMs on, I'm going to pause this just for a sec to make sure we catch both of these things. So that ESX host is on the 1.1.1 subnet. And so he's pinging that OpenStack VM that was running on 1.1.1.2. Is that too many ones? Anyway, um, so I'm switching. Layer 2 switching. I'm on the same subnet. I'm able to L2 switch between these. Uh, two different machines on two different flavors of hypervisor and two different cloud systems doing L2. And then in the second ping here, I'm actually pinging that virtual machine that was on that other subnet. So I'm able to do routing between these machines. I'm not going through a physical router. I'm not going through a router VM. The Nuage solution distributes its routing down into every hypervisor, distributed virtual routing and switching at very high scale, at very high performance, without all the extra Linux bridges that you need in the base level Neutron. So we achieve great performance, um, commercially available, highly available. All of these things are delivered today, and we're shipping this product now. 
So, you know, I've been able to achieve some connectivity between, which is step one for migrating from a VMware environment to an OpenStack environment. I've got a consistent network platform with consistent network policies between each of these. So to quickly wrap up, I'm going to show you more slides because I'm a slide guy. Um, as you can see, my technical skills suck, so I should just stick with PowerPoint. So, you know, to kind of wrap up, the creation of these distributed networks are good. Software-defined networking is a good, important step forward. But what we need is a better policy model and a better way for those DevOps teams to consume these network services. Um, you know, the creating these virtual networks but not changing the operational paradigm doesn't fix all the problems. And so a policy abstraction model is actually a proven framework for managing networks. We've been doing it in LTE and carrier networks for decades. Well, not LTE networks for decades, but you know what I mean. So we've got a lot of experience with these models. Let's bring these networking models to the cloud systems and move this forward in the right way. And uh, we've been successfully shipping this technology um, for just over a year now. Uh, so a little more information. Again, you'll be able to follow these links in my slides. The new networks.net is our uh, website. You can find out all kinds of information there. Um, the OpenStack uh, uh, policy work is, is, and the blueprint is linked here. There is similar work going on in Open Daylight. That's linked there that we're also working with the Open Daylight team on. And I'm over by about a minute and a half. Thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, come by the booth. Thank you.